Alrighty, this is going to be a brief GarageBand tutorial. Um, I've included a PDF file in the um, on the site for a complete, complete uh, tutorial of GarageBand. This should get you up and running on your final project. Uh, you're gonna when you launch GarageBand, go new project. You're gonna be hit the splash window, select loops because that's what you're gonna be working with for this course. So just go choose. Um, you can title this whatever. I'm gonna title it Benninger. I'm going to save it onto the desktop so I can get right at it. And you can keep this the same, but we're not going to mess with it too much. So, first thing you're going to do is you're, uh, you have a blank window. And if you'll notice that if this isn't showing, there's an eye icon down here. And if you click this, this is actually your loop browser. And in this case, you can see the loops. And I'm going to just do jazz. That's what I like. And an additional loop, just click on it. Jazz thing happening there. So we'll just go with a drum track. Now I like this drum groove, and again, um, I'm just going to drag it into my thing and notice how it comes right in to my project. So now if I want to extend this, okay, um, all I have to do is, is position my cursor at the bottom, and I can loop it. If I do across the top, see how I'm looping it and making it longer. So it will now play. And if I want to play this, I go down here and it, you can play. This is like a CD tape deck. Well, you know, you guys probably aren't familiar with tape decks because you're too young, but this will rewind, fast forward, everything else. So if I want to add something to this, let's say a nylon guitar, I click on my loop. I like that. I'll just drag it on to the beginning of my track. I'll see how that sounds. Cool. Now, if I want to, um, change, you know, I can build, so basically I'm just going to build my um, my song um, just like that. I can go down and search through all these loops if I wanted to go um, find a bass or tom-tom. I could go down, here's a nice bass thing. I'll just drag that on. There it is. Now notice my bass is a little bit longer, so I want to make my acoustic guitar loop like this. So basically I get an idea for creating. My acoustic guitar is a little loud, so I may want to just grab the volume control right here and turn it down. So that's basically how you're going to do that. Now if you want to automate the tracks as far as volume and everything else, if you just click on this arrow right here, notice that I have a track volume. I can actually make my volume, if I click here I'll get a line, I can actually move my volume up and move it down just by clicking on the line when you click on the line a dot will appear so now you should hear when I do this you'll hear the guitar going in and out getting louder getting softer and you can do that with panning and everything else you can select track pan um, automation whatever and when, when you close that window it will automatically um, do it you won't be seeing it so you can build your uh, your project just like this. You, know, you want to think about the American pop music, you want to think about an intro, AABA or blues. Um, your, your presets if you're using your um, loops probably be a little different than mine. I have a ton of them loaded on here. You won't need that much. So once you're done, you've made your project. Again, this is just a real quick tutorial on GarageBand. I'm sure if you go on to YouTube, there's a million more tutorials or the Apple site. Um, you want to save this as an MP3 file. So I'm going to go up to share. I'm going to go to export song to disk. Basically, that's going to save it to um, my hard drive. In this case, MP3 encoder. Now, um, I'm going to say good quality, which uh, best suited for voice. In the smaller the file size, the better. And I'm going to go export. Now, the other thing you could do is you can go to custom. In this case, 96. This gives you a menu. 96 is probably the lowest you'd want to go. Once you start getting up in here, the files start getting larger. But 96 is fine. You don't have to use VPR. You don't have to worry about it. VBR, I'm sorry. Then go, I'm going to save it. So go export. I'm saving it to my desktop. There's my Fenninger file right there, MP3, and it should say MP3. And then for you Mac people, well you will be a Mac if you're using GarageBand, if you just click on it and hold the space bar, you'll hear your, your lovely, there it is. So that's just a quick, quick tutorial on how to, to get through it. Anytime you want to go through and, and do more loops, go reset. 
This will give you some different loops to look at, like if I'm just looking at bass grooves right here, these are all my bass. Anything in the blue is an audio file, anything in the green is actually a MIDI file that you can edit, but I'm not going to get too, too much into that. So, um, so that's about it. So you can look at the music notation of a MIDI file and see what the bass player is actually playing. So hopefully this will help you for the class.